what is up you guys so this is an upstairs like patio area it is the upstairs of a starbucks i don't know if you can tell but there's andrew he's working uh on his phone and actually we're doing like this we're not really uh working too hard right now it's a saturday and um, I'm just chilling. Ooh, why is this so dark? So, we're not really working too hard. Uh, we brought our phones. It's kind of like a tired day. We're both very tired because yesterday we really did a lot of intense stuff. Um, actually, it was that last video that you guys saw where like it was like those two days, a lot of back-to-back -back classes. And actually, I didn't include a lot of stuff in it. We did even more than that, a lot more than what the videos showed. Um, there was just stuff that we threw in last minute. We threw in, we decided to go like, we did this hardcore gym workout. We decided to just spend like two hours at the gym towards the end of the day where we both like, did a lot of things that we can't we can't normally do because we were, we were sick but we decided to test ourselves um, I did push-ups I did um, like back push-ups bridge push-ups um, I did a lot of like abs core stuff um, then afterwards um, and, and Andrew ran a lot on a treadmill and stuff like that weights and then afterwards we did a rotation between the spa the sauna and uh, the and an ice plunge thing and swimming pool. So we like spent like 10 minutes in the sauna, then we went uh, in plunge pool, then we went in swimming pool. So like different varying levels of heat in the water. And uh, for me, I felt like I really got high doing it. It was like, I got really lightheaded because um, I would put my head in the water, like in the cold water, and then I put it back in the heat. And like, I can't even, and this is right after getting a deep tissue massage, like a Balinese massage. I can't imagine what stuff it did for my ring. I'm also sitting here, like, I'm sitting here, like, looking at people. So you can tell there's like a whole family coming out of there. And there's kind of like an argument happening. Um, but... So it was a really intense day, and then today we woke up really tired. My friend texted me last night uh, saying that she got in an accident, um, and she was she got really hurt, and um, you know was down for a visitor. And I'm still trying to debate if I should visit her, and it's like I know that it sounds kind of cold for me to be debating whether I should visit somebody that got in an accident but at the same time I'm so wary of meeting people in person like hanging out with people in person my energy right now is so walled off like I'm comfortable with certain relationships that I already know that I, I already have like certain rapport with some of you guys like my friends, like, you know, people that I might text or I might talk, Twitter DM or Instagram message or something like that. Like, people that I WhatsApp, my friends that I talk to on WhatsApp. Um, but it feels very regulated. It's, like, people that I've known for many, many years, you know. Um, I feel very walled off from new relationships. And in general, I just feel very protective of my energy. And actually, this person, um, I've known her for my whole life, actually. She's someone that I've known since childhood and randomly ended up also here in Bali. So around the same time as me. But I, I haven't known, known, like, a lot of people from my past past, like from elementary school, high school, from the community the from community or like the Jewish community uh, the like kind of like the religious Jewish community if, if, if you guys if you know what I'm talking about um, 
I feel very wary of because a lot of times they're very similar to me. And energy of people that leave the from community is can be very intense. I know what it looks like because it's me. Like when you are in a community like that, when you're in such a very, very restricted, very, uh, very regulated, structured community, like the ultra orthodox Jewish community, uh, if you leave it, especially if you leave it cold turkey, you don't have any family friends that are supporting you. Your energy is going to be you're gonna be moving at like a hundred miles an hour. And that's how I was, and it was very traumatic for me. It's very, very difficult to leave a community like that. I don't care if, and I've like gaslit myself because when I left the community, people would make comments, and I would talk about it online, and people like, ultra-Orthodox people would make comments like, oh, well, she was never that religious anyway, or she was never, Jewish anyway people would say things like that and then I would like internalize it and then I would like gaslight myself into thinking that's true oh well I was never really in it anyway but you know I was very very religious I was very in intense and very struck very uh and actually the people that were actually in my personal life will vouch for the fact that I was a very obedient girl and they would, a lot of people would never have even expected that I would go off the Dara. So, talk to somebody that actually knew me. So anyways, I just want to say like, uh, so it's just, I get really nervous meeting people or like, and even though those are the people I care about the most, like I want to help everybody, but there's a special place in my heart for people that are in that community, that are like in the from community, in that are going off the dera, thinking of going off the dera. However, uh, I'm not saying that you should, but like there's just special like empathy in my heart for you because of how hard it was for me, and I am like just like oh my gosh, I know how hard it is for these people, but at the same time. I get very scared because I'm still in a place where my energy is so fragile. So I feel like I so deeply, like I know what my purpose is in the world already. I know what it is. I know that I'm to be of service to other people. And at the same time, while I'm doing it, have fun, shine, show off, sell things look good, look as good as I can, as I can possibly look, uh, fall in love, have a family, like I know that I'm meant to do all those things, but I'm also meant to be of service to other people, and I feel like it's so hard for me to wrap my head around that I'm supposed to be doing that, because I still feel very nervous to connect to other people. Especially people that went through the same things that I went through or are still going through that. Um, it's like, it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, you know what it's like? It's like withdrawing from certain drugs. It's like if you were on a certain drug your whole life, that's exactly what it's like. I mean, Let's say you were in a certain, it's a certain type of drug. It's like, you know, the from community is a certain type of drug. Like, you're ultra-Orthodox your whole life. And maybe this applies to other people. Like, I know people that are, like, ex-Mormon follow me, ex-Amish. Someone, someone commented that they're ex-Amish. Uh, you know, any community, you know, ex-liberal, ex-conservative. Like, I don't even know. What, what whatever community that you were in that was so intense that it was like a cult almost so if you were in a community that was so 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 re regimented instructed structured i don't want to use the word cult because like not all cults are even like this but like you know very very disciplined religious community or ideology where like every single tiny little aspect of your life is kind of pre-programmed for you who you're gonna marry is pre-programmed for you. Everything. How you put on your shoes is pre-programmed for you. 
literally this is like people say this is a joke but this is actually still true like how you put on your shoes as a ultra orthodox shoe is programmed you, you, you know exactly how you're, you're gonna wear your shoes okay even the stutter i stutter sometimes um but i don't think i have like a from accent anymore but i think there's definitely a from accent. There's a way of talking. More hurry, hurry, hurry. Like you're stuttering and you just like, nin, 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 nin. like it's a very nervous energy. You're kind of trying to fall in line 24 seven. And it's like a drug because it keeps you on 24 seven on this rhythm that everybody is on. Everybody is on this rhythm together. They're on like a different wavelength than everybody else in the world around them. So imagine being on this drug your whole life and then all of a sudden you're suddenly taken off of this drug and then you're experiencing withdrawal and you have no support, you have no financial support. You have not been learning about finances in the world outside of it. You have not been learning about how to survive in the world outside of it, how to interact with people in the world outside of it. How to date in the world outside of it. You don't know how to talk if you're a girl. You don't know how to talk to guys outside of it. Yeah, there's people that they break the rules and they like talk to guys or girls and they, they try to like... But I didn't do that really. Like I didn't do that. It's not... I was very good. I try. I was a really good... I actually was a really good girl. Um, yeah, like I, I, I really did, um, for the most part, follow a lot of the rules. I, I did get a lot of like education from Loveline, and I used to listen to Loveline at night when I was in high school. I tried to like expand my horizons. I read Newsweek. Like there were little things I did to try to expose myself to the world outside of my community. But, um, yeah, it's still very hard. Like there is no, pre there is no amount of preparation that could prepare you when you're in a community like that. You have no clue about the first thing on how to survive because nobody taught you. You don't even have like the paradigm for it. And then to go, to leave it, yeah, you're going to have issues. So that's part of why I wrote House Hackers Anonymous. Although House Hackers Anonymous, the book, find in the description below. It's, it's for everybody, anyone that's having trouble surviving. Anyone that's like, what, you, you lost your job or you, you have a job, but you're like, it's actually, it's actually better if you read it while you have a job because then you can learn how to leverage your job into uh whatever into long-term um financial freedom so it's actually better if you already have a job and you're thinking about quitting it in like a week or something but first read this book before you quit and do what i tell you to do before you quit the job and then you can quit the job so or you can get fired or whatever is going to happen to you so this book is really um, to help anybody get out of survi survival mode but I think that I was the right person to write that book because leaving the community is crazy and I think that yeah like I, I hope that if I hope that someone I hope people benefit from it I don't know but I just feel like I want to be doing stuff like that like I want to be helping people that are like all of a sudden out in the wilderness feeling lost and everything but at the same time I don't even feel fully grounded in myself so like how how do I know when I've gotten to that point when I'm ready to like start venturing out there and bringing other people into my little bubble my little emotional bubble like I'm right now I'm just holding everybody at arm's length as much as I can and I feel safe that way so what is you know maybe I, I continue to hold everybody at arm's length 
and just introduce a new way of interacting with people like you send me a letter like let you know let people send me like a letter with like you know and then write letters back and forth so that it's a very like structured way of communicating to people and like I don't even know um here let me show you some more of this view this is Ubud I don't know there's just There is so much to do in Ubud and we're so tired today and we decided to come to like a really busy part of town and I don't really feel like doing anything. I have something in my teeth. I don't feel like doing anything. Uh, I wonder like what are you guys doing on a Saturday? Like, I don't feel like working, I don't feel like editing my last vlog. My last vlog is so full of little clips and stuff like that. I don't feel like pulling videos for TikTok. So guys, check out that. Check that out that she's holding. It's like, basically what she's holding is is like offerings that they give to it's a it's a cultural thing like everyone in bali does it they give um they every single day they, they there's like shrines here all over like statues and stuff like that and they put um offerings like with like little food plants things like that they put it in front of like the uh they'll put it in front of a shrine in a corner of the room, um, they'll put like an incense, they'll burn an incense for it at the same time. Just a lot of like like ritualistic stuff that people do here and it's, it's oddly comforting actually, you know, when I say oddly, it's oddly because I, I'm not familiar with it because it's still very new to me, but people do this every single day. It feels very comforting to know that there's like things that people do every single day and it, it makes me feel kind of safe because I feel like I still crave some of that ritualistic structure because I grew up with it, you know, being super religious. Like a regularity, like every day we do this thing. That, um, oh, look at that person's outfit. Look at, so look at her outfit, you can't tell. But I'm trying to think of outfit styles I'm trying to think of outfit styles for my brand and people walk around this town with like the most beautiful outfits so many pretty styles and like I'm just getting ideas constantly I'm still like haven't developed what I even want my brand to be like like I thought about doing a brand with Andrew Andrew says He's, he's not sure because he's worried that I, I'm going to get freaked out, which he's right. I probably am going to get freaked out if I start something with him and then I get, I'll get scared that I'm like becoming committed to him, to doing something with him. <laughs> Even though we live together and we're basically like a married couple, but like I still feel very nervous to legally binding, legally or financially merge with him in any way. I feel very scared because it's just so hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that I, me and Andrew are dating. Like, it's so hard for me to wrap my head around that because, like I've said it before, it's just, he's older, he's had a whole life before me, he has a whole very set dynamic with the people in his life that is like a certain way, and, um, it's like very different than what I like, I don't know. So I just, it's, it's hard for me to see myself as being Andrew's girl. It's weird for me to even wrap my head around it at this point. I feel like um, other people have like sort of accepted it, I think, I don't know. But 
I'm, I'm still, I'm still getting used to the idea of it, honestly, to even, so, yeah. So I thought about doing my own brand that's just my name, Artist Design, and there's so many opportunities here, there's so many manufacturers that you can go to, you can talk to them about, like, you know, they, they do different, um, different, that, that, that work with different materials, you can give them your designs, you can make, but I don't even know what who I am, like what would embody my designs, what would embody things that I would do that, you know what I mean, like this, I guess this takes exploring and finding yourself, I'm still finding myself, like what do you guys do to find and discover your brand? Uh, it's not just my brand, like, just to find and discover my style, my style of dressing, my style of music, my style of colors that I like. Like, I don't know, because I've been in survival mode my whole life, but I don't do style. Like, I've just been, I've been doing whatever is practical my whole life, like, yeah, as long as I can remember, everything that I do has been for survival, to ace my exams, to just do the thing, to get it over with, to get it done with, you know, like, it's just been to make, like, the way I, my business choices in the past, just to make money so that I can survive, you know what I mean? It's not really been about, and, and when I was furnishing my homes, like, my place, it was just about finding the cheapest thing to furnish my home with uh, so that I can then rent it out or sell it or whatever. Like it hasn't, the focus has not really been about my own self-expression as much, except for my writing. My writing is the one, my writing, my vlogs, like just the way I talk is, I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's, it's hard for me to discuss, decide what my style is, what my brand is, like to even describe myself. I feel like I need someone else, like someone who watches these videos to come and say, this is you, this is your style, like this is what you embody. Maybe I'll ask one of you guys actually. <laughs> but I was actually, right now I just was thinking about it, like I think my style might be like very like primal nature animal type of stuff, like jungle. And I don't know if I'm just saying this because, because I'm in Bali, but maybe that's why I, I'm in Bali because... So I don't know, maybe. Um, and actually in that modeling session that you guys saw in the other video, in last time's video, um, in last week's, last time's modeling session, uh, she said that, the instructor said that I would work really well with pants, like selling pants might be my thing. So I'm not sure. I'm thinking if I do pants, it would be like, like top and bottom, because that's what I like. I like wearing like, I like wearing like a cute crop top and matching bottom, very comfy. Um, and then just like a pair of sandals or something. I think that could be my look. And this outfit, I don't even remember where I got it. I've had this forever. It's in so many of my pictures and my videos. It's just, and it's ripping, I think. Yeah, look, it's ripping. It's so embarrassing. But I just have not really, I, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get new clothes and to constantly be, I don't know. I just don't know what my style is like. I don't, I don't really like, know what my style is when I even go to get new clothes. I end up having to throw a lot of stuff out anyways. Um, and I don't like shopping. Like, it takes so much time. I don't, it's, it's so rare that I'll get a new outfit and I'll actually wear it. Like I have a bunch of outfits that I bought and then I threw out because I don't wear them. Like this is one of like the lucky outfits that I bought it and I actually ended up wearing it all the time but that's not the case for everything. So it's just hard for me to like, 
under I don't know it's hard for me to understand myself and that's why I have at this point I have two coaches because I have my coach which is my best friend that I talk to all the time and then she introduced me to her coach um like a life coach type of thing who also lives here the one that does the somatic therapy and so that's she's not you know I she's not very accessible for me to talk to all the time the way I would talk to my friend but she's my friend's coach so like now I have so I just feel like maybe that's just what I need in life is to keep doing what I'm doing but then have like coaches that bring me the self-awareness that I need that, that will just tell me like okay this is your style this is what you look good doing this is like where like my friend tells me this all the time she says like oh I, I could see you going in this direction or doing this thing she says that stuff to me all the time and uh, that actually is very helpful I could I think I could see the benefit in that So I'm actually curious, like, what are you guys doing? Like, what's everybody doing on a Saturday? Um, right now, as we speak, most of you guys are sleeping or just waking up because it's like 5 p.m. here, which is it's 5 a.m. in New York City because it's a 12 hour difference in New York City. So 5 a.m. New York City. LA it would be like 2 a.m. Yeah, so mostly everybody is sleeping that would be watching. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't like, I don't work. Like the most I've been working is I just, I, you know, accounting, I do, I do taxes, I do accounting, I go into like my investment account, stuff like that, move money around. Um, I talk to manufacturers, like that doesn't feel like work because it's kind of like an adventure, it's more like hands-on. I've been doing research, talking to manufacturers, looking at different styles. I feel like it's so when your life is sort of like laid out for you it's so much easier when you're like a nine to five employee when you go to school when you, when you have college and your schedule is kind of laid out for you I mean even college is a little more like alternative schedules than high school but like it's just so much easier to go through life when things are laid out for you but I feel like the more independent you become, financially free, you start to develop this thing where you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much time, what do I do with my time? I have so much freedom, flexibility, who am I, what do I do with all this? And people, like, I think people will go crazy a little bit, um, but it's like a really good sign. Like if you're experiencing this point in your life where you're like, who am I, what, what should I be doing? Like. What's, what direction should I be going? That's kind of a sign that you've, um, you are free. You broke out of whatever set rule system was placed in front of you. And the benefit to breaking out of like like set rule system um, is that you're just going to be wealthier. You're going to be happier. You're going to be more prosperous because like most rule systems, they just depreciate over time because they become saturated with people. Like like most, like let's say you have a community of people. Whoever started the community is gonna be like, let's say you have like, let's say there's like a religious cult. Let's say someone starts a cult. The person who starts the cult is gonna be the richest, right? Because they start the cult, people join it, and they pay to like be part of this existing system. And then other people join in 
and they pay them and other people join them, they pay them. I don't know if I'm giving a good example of this, but eventually over time, like when you're born into a system, or when you're stuck in a system that is so, 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 so regimented for you, that you can't even see outside of it, that you just think that that's everything, that that's the whole entire world, um, you're essentially like a very, very tiny cog in the machine and you're almost like you're, the demand for you is very tiny and you're kind of like useless and your value is very little. So the, the amount of leverage that you can have in a world like that, in a society like that is gonna be very tiny because you're just replicable. You're so easily replicable because you were born into a system where you're so identical to everybody else that's in it. So I don't know if I explained that well enough, but what, when, when you start to see in your life that you keep exiting, 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 like exiting systems to the point where you're just kind of out there, you're kind of lost and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like, what is my style? What is my personality? What is my language? Like, I, I've been thinking about this recently. I speak English because my followers speak English and I love my followers. Like, I love my viewers. Like, I love you guys. I love my friends so much. But is English really my language? It certainly was not my first language. My first language was Farsi. And, um,. I don't feel very connected to a lot of things about the English language. And maybe I, I was, I am supposed to be speaking a different language. I'm supposed to be doing these vlogs but in a different language. Um, but I won't change my vlogs to a different language. But maybe I should be also doing something else in a different language. Um, I don't know, stuff like that. Um, when you start to get to a point where you're all of a sudden questioning everything you all of a sudden don't feel like you feel a little bit lost like, what should I be doing where should I be going what should I be building what is my career path what is my life goal uh, that's how you know that you're really you're you're getting to a point of freedom i.e. prosperity because you're becoming in a place where you're more powerful um, where you are becoming less replicable meaning you're becoming the kind of person that can have more leverage if I haven't explained myself well enough I was recently watching a video that my friend my coach friend sent me um, of this woman who is giving a home birth in her uh, house she was like she was giving birth to her like fourth baby in her home and some of you guys might be following her I forget her name Allie something and she's like basically this influencer mom mommy influencer she talks a lot about like a holistic healthy like alternative homeopathic lifestyle kind of healing ourselves, raising kids, homeschooling, she homeschools her kids, um, living an alternative lifestyle to what has been sort of like spoon fed to us, to a lot of us in the States mostly. So she's from the States just like, just like me. And um, she had a post recently where she talked about uh, like she talked about so she homeschools her kids and she talks about people that uh, raise their kids in the school system in the public school system or even in the private school system but like in the nine to five type style school system or like the eight to five or eight to four school system where your kid is basically just sitting for like 10 hours a day in a in a desk in a, at a desk in a chair and like doing analytical stuff um, and why people subject their kids to that even though like kids a lot of kids really struggle and don't really don't enjoy it actually no kid enjoys it like I didn't enjoy it I just did it but uh, people subject their kids to that because they say well this is how the real world is like in the real world if you want to succeed in the real world 
Uh, you're gonna have to sit at a desk probably and you're gonna have to sit, you're gonna have to learn discipline to sit at a desk on a chair and work on a screen or on a piece of paper for like 10 hours a day or more. And so they train their kids from a young age to do that even though the kids don't enjoy it. Uh, they end up having to take a lot of like very, very consequential like medications because of it. They, they, they put their kids on antidepressants and ADHD medications from a very young age in order to do, to, to live this in this rhythm, in this very sedentary like classroom rhythm where they they're go they're, they go to school every day they're taught by a total stranger around other like depressed children uh not a lot of like sunlight not a lot of like work using their hands go being outdoors playing like not a lot of like healthy natural human things but just because they were they were convinced at some point in their life that that's how the real world is the real world resembles that people go nine to five jobs they like study for like many 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 years so that they can have like uh, a job where they sit at a desk and they have to work for like 12 hours a day and they have like someone sort of like controlling their schedule and it's very regimented and they live you know they're you know they're, they probably marry somebody that's doing the same thing they grow up and they, you know, and then they like go drinking on the weekends and then they have a bunch of kids and the kids kind of like do that system and everyone just kind of like flows in that system without questioning it because they, they're like, oh, well, that's how the real world is. And so we're trying to raise our, who said that that's the real world? That is such a tiny, tiny section of people in the world. And in fact, when you step out of it and you think to yourself, like, that's such a tiny, tiny, tiny and sh deteriorating section of the world. Like, a lot of those jobs have already disappeared, are continuing to disappear. Um, and you basically have raised your kids on antidepressants in a very toxic, sedentary lifestyle not learning other languages, not exploring the world, not being hands-on, not learning how to start a business or be entrepreneurial or be creative, entrepreneurial or be creative or like have their own form of self-expression. You basically condition your kids to be a cog in a machine, like in a factory to be brainwashed easily. Most of these kids end up getting brainwashed by whatever the trending thing is in America. Like, how is it that everybody in America has the same exact political opinions? Like, how is it that, like, you ask someone, like, what they think about the state of the world or politics or life or this and that, how is it that everybody's thoughts look identical? Like, they were trained, that people were trained that way. They were trained to be. And... Oh, someone just got pulled over. So, they're trained to be a cog in the machine because their parents at some point were convinced that that is, that is the real world. When the reality is that the real world is whatever you want it to be. The real world is this. Look, I mean, there's a family right there. They're walking around, they have a baby. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm just using that as an example, there's so much noise. But the real world is li literally whatever you want. The real world is literally whatever you want it to be. If you want the real world to be where people are living like nomads, expats, whatever, and they're having their kids and their kids are going to international schools all over the world every few months they're in a different school because they they're you know part of like a nomad group like there's so many nomad groups where people are part of the same community but like they just sort of like rotate around the world in different cities and their kids know each other because they're friends and they're kind of like used to that lifestyle and it's fun 
and that is their stability like you can find that there's uh, lifestyles where people are working and living remotely and their kids are you know they're staying in one place but their kids are going to like and uh, a hybrid like school where they're you know partially being taught at home partially being taught uh, with their friends learning different languages there's lifestyles where you could be living off the grid you could live in the states off the grid you can live uh, away from technology you can live only with technology you can live in a you know like Amish community like literally the real world is whatever you want it to be but I just feel like there are certain communities that have done such a good job of becoming so big and all-encompassing and like convincing themselves that they're all that exists in the world like Americans are like this like Americans we think that we're all that exists in the world because all you hear about is things that are in the English language so you just assume that like your little English speaking corner of the world is all there is and that's the whole world that's real life that's the real world uh, or you just assume that like your paradigm because you can't even you don't even have like the tools in your brain like the receptors to even notice the the stimuli that are coming outside of it like you don't have the receptors to notice what might be happening outside of that paradigm so I don't know if I'm making sense but uh, that post from Ali, whatever her name is, really spoke to me, and I felt like it's so true. Like people will make, they will suffer themselves, and they'll make their kids suffer, and they'll just kind of like uh, push everybody into this. Uh, well, they have to be prepared for the real world, thinking that like the real world has to be this terrible, bleak. Like, why do you even have kids if that's how you see the real world? You know what I mean? Anyways. Um, a lot of white hairs. I grew a lot of white hairs over the past few years. And I feel like it's worth it. Like, whatever I gained from these white hairs coming in feels very worth it right now. I literally just, I, I'm having a ball. Like, I mean, it's, I don't have the, the stresses. And I think a lot of it is like the stuff I've done in the past like 10 years. Uh, I don't have the stresses that I used to have and I don't think I ever will. Like, it would be impossible actually for me to ever have the, to ever have to go through anything that I've gone through in the past because a lot of it was developmental a lot of it was like um, going through such a dramatic change in my early 20s and learning so many very very hard lessons that I don't think like unless you were to give me a lobotomy or something like force me to unlearn everything that I've learned it would be impossible for me to go through the same struggles again you know? So, yeah. I'm never going to dye my hair. Like, I'm not going to dye this. I'm going to keep it. Because I'm actually very proud of it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you had to make me go through the same things again I don't think that I don't think I would screw it up I mean as much as I did before it was really hard to like I, I was recently looking at um, Andrew Tate posted which I'm not really interested in Andrew Tate's posts anymore like I used to enjoy them more but I feel like a lot of it is feels a lot of it feels repetitive um, and a lot of it is just he, he seems to be really uh, focused about how much he doesn't like women instead of like 
It doesn't feel very productive. Like, it feels like I'm just absorbing, like, someone's traumas. You know what I mean? Like, he was traumatized by women, and I feel like I'm absorbing all his trauma when I read his posts. But um, one thing that he said, um, Andrew Tate posted about, like, yeah, like, people aren't getting married nowadays because men want to marry virgins, and there's no more virgins left. And the thing is, like, I come from a community where there's a lot of virgins, and I actually personally know a lot of virgins. And I was a virgin until I was 24. And the thing is that you might not believe this if you're not from a community that has a lot of virgins, but I am from a community that has a lot of virgins. Ironically, women that are virgins are less likely to attract marriageable men, men that are wanting to commit i don't know why it's like this but it was like this for me this is a huge problem with a lot of my friends that are still either in the community or left the community but are still a virgin like being a virgin not always but a lot of times comes with a level like a vibe that you're not very experienced and when you have this like i'm not very experienced vibe maybe it's just in america i don't know but for some reason, it, it seems to repel a lot of men that want to get married. It seems to repel a lot of marriageable men. And it seems to really, really attract the kind of men that don't want to commit for marriage, that don't want to get married. And uh, it just makes me think, like, first of all, a lot of people that, like, if, you, if you're an Andrew Tate fan, I'm not, like, dunking on you, but I feel like a lot of people think they want to get married, but they don't. They don't want to get married. Because when they do actually meet, like, a woman that wants to get married or she's a virgin, like, a lot of people think they want virgins, but what they really want is a girl that says she's a virgin, but acts more seductive and more experienced. Um, because when they do actually meet the virgin they a lot of times are in over their head like they don't they realize that they actually didn't didn't want to like a lot of people think that they'll meet a virgin like i think a lot of guys that grow up in communities where their girls are having sex from when they're like 10 or 11 or whatever the age people have sex um they just assume that like oh like girls in my community or, or my world are kind of boring and uh like i like you know i want you know the, the kind of see like um religious like arabic girls on tv looking all mysterious or whatever and they'll be like oh like i want a mysterious girl that's a virgin but a lot of times virgin girls we or you know we like a lot of times virgin girls uh they're not mysterious, they just are just less experienced. And as a guy, you don't really know that you're attracted to that until you're actually in the presence of it. And I've met people that were like attracted to it, but not for marriage. Like I, I haven't met a lot of people that thought it was very appealing for marriage. And even, like, like in my most recent relationships that were really good relationships, including the one that I'm in right now, like, my partner really appreciated that I was from a world where, like, that was less promiscuous. But at the same time, the reasons why they were attracted to me a lot of times stemmed from my experience like from the experience I had. The hardship, the struggles, the navigating dating world, learning about men. Um, it's really, when I was a virgin, like when I was less experienced with men in that like really intimate way, um, my expectations were very different than they are now. Like my expectations were almost like robotic like I expected a man to be almost what what I would think right now is kind of unrealistic like I expected a man to be basically like 
gay. Like what a what the, the classic gay guy is. That's how I wanted my man to be like that I would marry. So I, I wanted a man that was like perfectly manicured, that got his hair done every day, that was like had a perfect job, that was like really stable, looked good, that was really nice, that was like very cool and trendy. And I ended up like in the beginning when I first lost my virginity, I ended up like the most legit relationships that I got into were with gay guys and they ended up just becoming friendships because I didn't understand men I didn't understand like I was coming in to dating with a context that wasn't fully formed yet that I, I didn't have like the full context of what men are like in an intimate way to know what I wanted so that's all to say like without all these experiences and like the struggles it's really hard to even begin to know what you want and develop or what you're even looking for without putting yourself out there having the struggles going through stuff getting out of your comfort zone get out of your comfort zone Can you believe that it's almost been an hour and I've just been rambling like crazy? I can believe it. But get out of your comfort zone, whoever's watching this. Maybe this is your sign. Maybe this is your sign that whatever you've been doing until now, maybe it's worked, maybe it hasn't worked, but imagine switching it up and adding a new rhythm to it. Imagine how lethal you'll be. You already know how to do what you've been doing. Imagine adding a new oomph to your life, a new direction, like a new set of skills, a new paradigm, a new language, a new country, a new community, a new like way of being. If you're if you have a partner, maybe imagine like spicing up your life with them a little bit. I feel like a lot of people will project like a lot of people if you're if you're single it's really easy because it's really easy to improve yourself when you're single because everything you're kind of forced to look inward for everything for all to fix all your problems but when you're in a relationship I feel like it's really easy to just blame all your problems on your partner because it's much easier than having to look inward but the reality is that even if you're in a relationship like it's still you like your relationship the problems you have in your relationship or in your home and your place like it's all stuff that's happening in your life it's all like an issue you have in your life and I feel like a lot of people are a lot of people are like depressed and like not really motivated and not finding like meaning in their lives but they're not able to see that in themselves because they're just constantly distracting themselves with their partner 24 7 if they're in a relationship or with that people in their life so they'll like see the partner being depressed and they'll be like oh like my partner is depressed or whatever my partner isn't really going anywhere in life but they'll they won't but they're not able to see that in themselves until they're finally alone and i say that about other people but this is true with me like it happened with me a lot a lot of times and that's why i'm so grateful for the time that I've had to be alone because it's just really hard yeah it's just really hard to see it if you're just with someone like there is no such thing as relationship problems when when you realize that everything in the world in your life is like a figment of your imagination and you can start by controlling your life by controlling your imagination and like what you want and how you feel and like just really take everybody else out of the equation and like really just focus on your whatever this simulation is on improving it on bettering it and whoever is your partner or your friends or like people in your life they'll just be along for the ride 
they might do it too. They probably will do it too if you start doing it, you know. Um, this is how it works. People do things in blocks. If you start, make the first move, you know, you've, you've been in the same job for the past five years, you're bored as heck, and you want to change, you know, but your partner doesn't want to do it. Your partner doesn't want to move to a new place. Your partner doesn't want to quit their job or move remote, do remote stuff. Your partner doesn't want to start a business. You do it. You do it. Take your partner out of the equation. Take everybody in your life out of the equation. Be the change you want to see in the world, and it's true. You start doing it, it's impossible that other people won't eventually start doing it with you because, what, they're going to stay alone? You know? And another thing is, like, a lot of times people will think that they got the idea to do something or the or, or here's the other thing like this has happened with me so many times and it's actually very frustrating where I'll be like telling everybody like we should do this we should do this like we should like uh let's move to this other place let's move to this other place and everyone is like looking at me like I'm crazy like ew like what is wrong with you that's not cool like like, the cool thing is to do this other thing and then uh, I'll go ahead and do whatever I said I was going to do because I always do I just do whatever I want to do and then everybody will not realize that they're saying this because of me but they'll all of a sudden think that that thing that I did is like now the in thing or the trendy thing and they'll be like yeah like they'll just all of a sudden think that's accepted and normal just because I did it but they won't realize that the only reason they think it's normal or cool now is because I started doing it and I normalized it for them and people are just like sheep like most people are sheep they won't even realize so you can you know you can really have so much power in your life and control in your life and just do what you want to do and don't worry about other people you're like, oh, like, my, uh, like, I don't know. I, I, I love talking to people about their relationships and stuff like that because it's very interesting to me. Let's say, let's say you're like, um, I don't, you know, I feel like the, you know, my parents are not very understanding of that I'm gay. Or my parent, you know, my parents think that it's crazy or my parents or my partner is not my partner is uh, just never goes to the gym. My partner doesn't ever want to get up and go to the gym. So, like, why do they need to do that? So, you can put on your gay clothes and go out and do your thing. You can get up, go to the gym, start initiating and, like, doing the things that you want to do. And... The people that are in your life, they'll be able, instead of you explaining to them, trying to explain to them why something is good or they should do X, Y, Z, or they should flow in the direction that you want, they'll see it in motion. And you won't have to explain anything. They will immediately follow. When you start initiating things in your life, and they'll, because you're, you're exemplifying it for them, you're showing your seriousness to the world, about what you want and they won't even think twice about it they'll just do it they'll want to they'll they'll just get on your ship and they'll want to do what you're doing because it's fun and they see it in motion um anyways i don't even know what that ramble was about but i hope you guys are having a fantastic day Monkeys jumping everywhere. Monkey families everywhere. Oh, there's a baby monkey. Tiny little baby monkey.
want them to like attack somebody else. Oh look, they're having sex in the middle of the street. Look at that. <laughs> you saw that? monkeys like just sitting Monkey. <laughs> All right, walk behind me. You can keep your camera out as you go by. Just make sure you're okay. walking. Around. not steal everything from the shops. Shops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 